welcome to Neptune in a nutshell. Now, the discovery of Neptune was very central in uh, the history of astronomy because Isaac Newton had developed a theory of gravity where the forces between every planet and the sun and every planet and each other could be calculated and used to predict the future positions of planets in their orbits around the sun. And this was a very powerful method and in uh, the 1820s astronomers had already found that positions of Neptune, sorry, the positions of Uranus were not being accurately predicted by the laws of uh, Newton, where the other planets were uh, fine. And this so it was immediately suggestive that, not that the, that the laws of Newton were wrong, that instead that there was another planet out further beyond Neptune, sorry, out further beyond Uranus, the planet which we now call Neptune. And um, the uh, uh, astronomer Jonathan Couch began to make predictions about where this planet would be in the sky based on these calculations about where the planet that was called the perturbing planet, or the, it was very often just simply called the planet beyond Uranus, and uh, was it there, and he made predictions. Now, um, Le Verrier in France made a prediction and did very precise calculations, was able to pass those uh, calculations on and prediction on to Johann Galley, who w was looking and found Neptune within one degree of Le Verrier's prediction. And so uh, Le Verrier and, and, God and Gottfried, Johann Gottfried Galle are given credit for discovery of Neptune, and um, William of Sal discovered the object that you see here, Triton, 17 days later, and this is the large moon of Neptune. But the, uh, so there's two things of consequence. Now there's a new planet in the solar system, thereby eight planets in the solar system discovered by 1846, and Another moon, by then already, moons of Saturn had been discovered, and four moons of Jupiter, five moons of Saturn had been discovered, and the uh, dramatic confirmation of Newton's law of gravity came because not only was it able to predict the motions of the planets, but a deviation in the actual prediction and the observation of Uranus led to the discovery of this new planet, which probably would have happened much later if it had not been uh, the case that uh, they could use the law of gravity to make that prediction. So, um, the second moon of Neptune was discovered at McDonald Observatory 2.1 meter telescope, which is the 82 inch telescope, uh, by Kuiper in 1949. And um, some other moons were discovered because they eclipsed stars as, uh, as observations were being made from Earth. But we really didn't uh, uh, learn much about Neptune until uh, the Voyager mission. And it was only Voyager 2 that flew by Neptune. And Neptune hasn't been visited by any other spacecraft besides Voyager 2 in the flyby 
which occurred on the 25th of August, 1989. And Voyager now is on its way and has crossed basically the edge of the uh, solar system and out into interstellar space, as has Voyager 1. But we learned a lot about Neptune with Voyager 2. We can see a picture here showing Jupiter, Saturn, which are the gas giant planets, Uranus and Neptune, which are the ice giant planets, and these two have the distinctive uh, blue color based on the fact that they have very large amounts of methane in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium for all four. Jupiter and Saturn are different in that they don't have much methane in their atmospheres. Uranus and Neptune have and methane, and the methane absorbs the red light. So red light from the sun comes and, uh, in, and gets reflected off the atmosphere of Uranus and Neptune, and the red light gets absorbed, whereas the blue light in the uh, sort of blue and purple light that we see here gets reflected away. So these show the relative scale, the correct scale, and we can see these two are very different, though similar. And when we compare these to Earth, here is Neptune. We can see that there is a large spot we'll look at here, but this is the Earth, and we can see that the Earth is significantly smaller. And not only that, the Earth is a very different kind of planet. The Earth is a rocky, planet, which we also call terrestrial, which just means Earth-like, but a rocky planet with that has a surface. All of these planets do not have a solid surface. They um, have a atmosphere that's very thick but, and no solid surface. So Neptune, Voyager sees the great dark spot we can see here, the Hubble Space Telescope, when it observed Neptune 20 years or so later, it did not observe the great dark spot. So the great dark spot, it was a storm that uh, has since gone away, but it's quite big, almost the size of Earth. Here's a, another closer view of it. Now the Hubble Space Telescope did observe uh, the uh, planet and found storms and we can see different times. This is August 1998. This is one side and this is the other side as Neptune spun. You got different images and the storm patterns were seen in both times a few uh, year, uh, uh, two years apart. 1996 and 1998, storms are there, and uh, but are changing and are located at different locations. And so we don't see the very long-lived storm pattern that we do did see with Jupiter, which was the great red spot. But we do see storm patterns on Neptune. In addition, a composite image here, infrared and visible, shows that there is methane in the atmosphere, uh, and that methane is what chemically is interacting with the sun's light and causing the color to appear, the blue color. We can see here clouds, and we can the shadows of the clouds onto the uh, lower, level of Neptune is seen there. So some three-dimensional relief is visible. Neptune, like all of the outer planets, has rings. The uh, satellite took these images as it flew by Neptune, and these are different pictures put together 
so we can see the rings on both sides. And this is a moon, probably um, Triton. And we can see the rings there are thin, nothing like Saturn's rings, but there are complete rings around Neptune. 